again. Welcome to a, another episode of Graphing with Mr. Bolden. Today we're going to be looking at the foreign exchange graph. The foreign exchange graph is a market that deals with the buying and selling of currency. Here on Graphing with Mr. Bolden, we are using the examples of Nerdtopia and Geekdom when we talk about trade. Last time we left them in the comparative versus absolute advantage video. We had Nerdtopia and Geekdom making little cars or little people and then trading with each other. Now, that sounds really simple. I'll give you one car for one little people. That's not really how it works. Uh, in most cases, we buy and sell stuff from all over the world. So if I wanted to buy a car from, say, Geekdom, I would have to pay in Geekdom currency, which looks kind of like a cookie. All right. Or if I was in Geekdom and I wanted to say I wanted to buy a little person from Nertopia, I would have to pay them in their currency, Nertopia bucks. All right. So in doing this, we have to set exchange rates, and that's where the foreign exchange graph comes in. We're going to look at how that's done. Foreign exchange graph is really two graphs interacting together as one. All right. Uh, so whatever two currencies you're looking at, they work together, but in separate fields. Uh, so when you have two countries trading, in this case, Nertopia and Geekdom, and remember they are sell trading cars and little people, when we are trading for these items, we're actually paying for them in each the other currency. So for the sake of example, let's say Geekdom is making little people, Nerdum, Nerdtopia is making the cars. All right. So if I buy a little person from Geekdom, I have to pay for that little person in Geekdo bucks. All right. And if somebody from Geekdom was to buy a car from Nerdtopia, they have to pay for those in the correct currency as well. Sorry for the camera issue. All right. So what happens is that when we buy something from another country, we actually have to place a demand on that country's currency. All right. So let's look at Geekdom. Geekdom controls the supply of their currency, because it's their currency, and everybody else, in this case Notopia, controls the demand. All right? In Notopia, they control the supply of their currency, because it's theirs, and they, everybody else, in this case Geekdom, controls the demand. So if there's a sudden increase in demand for Geekdom little people from Notopia, what they have to do is they have to go to this imaginary marketplace and drop off a bunch of their currencies and pick up a bunch of Geekdo bucks, taking them off the market. And in doing so, because it's Geekdom and they, and Notropia controls the demand for Geekdom bucks, the demand for Geekdo dollars increases. Now notice there's a large supply of Notropia dollars left on the market. And so what happens in Notropia's market at the same time is there is an increase in supply, All right? And because these are supply and demand graphs, we know that an increase in demand leads to an increase in price. We call that on this market a appreciation of the exchange rate, which is the equilibrium price set by this market. And we know an increase in supply leads to a decrease in price, which in this case we're calling depreciation. All right, now there are lots of things that can influence these markets besides just a rise in the demand for a foreign good, and here they are. It could be consumer taste, the wanting of more little people. Relative interest rates. As investors, we're going to invest where interest rates are the highest, and to invest in that country, you have to use that country's currency. Relative income. When I make more money, I buy more of all goods, both foreign and domestic and relative price level. We will buy where the goods are the cheapest. All right, now, how do you know which graph to move how? Well, figure out which one you'll be buying more of, investing in, all right? That's the one you should shift demand of. Now, how do you know how to shift the other one? Opposite line, same direction. So if I increase the demand for Geekdo bucks, I'm going to increase the supply for nerd dollars, all right? If I was to decrease supply over here, I'm going to be decreasing demand over here. Opposite line, same direction. Good luck.